that in a long while. Hello everyone and welcome to Let's Play DuckTales Remastered and I should specify I am playing the PC version. Those who have played this version know what that can entail later on. Also, sorry it took so long to get to this Scott because he gifted me this game a while back. You know, we're playing on medium mode just because I find it the best. Trust me, Kiltz. Me money bin alarm. Quick, Duckworth, get the limo. I shall, uh, <clears throat> get out in gear, sir. Hurry, Duckworth, hurry! The pedal is to the metal, Mr. McDuck. Oh, not the Beagle Boys again. If they think they can stand between Scrooge McDuck and his three cubic acres of cash, they've got another thing coming. They got the old voice cast back from the original cartoon. Oh, it's so adorable. It's really good to hear the old Scrooge. Either way, the game is still what it used to be back in the NES days. You're looking around for treasure, pogoing all around, though the game does have an option for the DuckTales 1 or 2 pogo controls. I prefer the DuckTales 2 controls just because I don't have to hold down to do anything. Are you all right, my boy? Yeah, but you better watch out. The Beagle Boys mess with your security system. <laughs> yeah, we take over the whole place. <laughs> yeah, me money. Hey, don't forget about me, Uncle Scrooge. Eh? Oh, 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 don't worry, lad, I'll save you. Press the button to progress. <sighs> Mama, be so proud. Ah. Oh, 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 oh. Now that's what I call a stomachache. You were hit on the head, you moronic marauder. Thanks, Uncle Scrooge. You're welcome, lad. But Huey, what are you doing here? Well, we saw the Beagle Boys going into the money bin. We? Sure. Louie and Dewey are here, too. You better hurry, Uncle Scrooge. We might be. Oh, great. But obviously, new to the game is a new intro level to actually get you a tutorial to the controls, which honestly, despite how simple the original DuckTales was, I do like tutorial levels in games all the same, just because, especially with a game like this that's marketed more towards kids, there's no real harm in having it. Plus, for a game that has as much more story content in, as this compared to its original, I think there's around an hour of cutscenes in this game. Uh... Might as well, right? Although I should note, uh, one of the big criticisms when this came around release was the actually the amount of story. Uh, the game eventually did get a patch, the, the, I think December of that year, to add a skip cutscene button. It also fixed some crashes, not all of them. There's one major one I'll talk about later on. But thankfully, if you're only in this for the gameplay, you can now skip the cutscenes. I don't know why you would on your first play, though, because honestly, they're well done. Uh, some of the animations during the cutscenes can be a bit off, but on the whole, not bad. Returning now is also the barrels we can have. I think those were introduced in DuckTales 2. I think. It's been 
since I did the original LP that I play the original DuckTales, which means it's... Oh god, I haven't played the original since high school. Hey kid, you got a sandwich or something? Let me go, you big old bum! Not even for an afternoon snack. Big time in trouble, me. Get away from him, you gluttonous goon! Sorry, Scroogey. Not a chance. And now it's time for minor puzzle elements. Press one button, we get a hammer. The other one, we get a burger. Burger plus hammer equals kaboom. You saved me, Uncle Scrooge! I uh, did. Are you hunt lot? Nah, I'm fine. But I saw Louie heading up the stairs with about a thousand beagle boys right behind him. Stay here. I'll handle this. Now, one thing I do want to apologize off the bat for is that for some reason, this game was really inconsistent in recording. Like, on my computer, the game ran at like 60 frames, but it recorded somewhere between, I want to say like 35 to 50. And I don't know exactly what's causing that. In fact, in total, this game actually gave me quite a bit of shit when recording. Uh, more on that as we progress, but this was an interesting one to, uh, say the least. The game also oddly jumps to 60 only during cutscenes. Maybe it's due to, like, entities that are loaded or something. I don't know. Environmental effects may be more than likely as well. Now, one thing you saw me do at the start of the game was select a difficulty. Uh, there are four difficulties, though you only get the fourth one after beating the game on hard mode. Easy mode is unlimited lives. The map of any given level, which you can view with the pause button, is viewable at all times. Uh, you actually take damage in half hearts instead of full hearts. Enemies are a bit slower as well, and there's one other bonus that it shares with medium mode. Medium mode, by the way, is what we're playing on. You start the game with two lives. Uh, you have to build the map as you go, kind of like a Metroid game. You take one damage point, like a full heart at a time. There's also hard and extreme mode, and you uh, get an uh, extreme mode for beating the game on hard. But I can't actually explain all of their uniquenesses until we actually get into one of the main stages, because then I'll actually have ex examples to go off of. So I'll talk more about that when it becomes more prevalent. So for right now, hey, an invincibility coin. Invincibility is still pretty short-lasting compared to the NES game. However, you at least still destroy any enemy you touch, which is nice and dandy. Though there's not many invincibility tokens in the game to begin with, and I should not have destroyed that, because I think there's a red diamond in there. Though on the whole, uh, money isn't as important in DuckTales Remastered as it was in DuckTales 1 or 2 on the NES. More on that later. Hold on, lad. I'll have you free in a jiffy. Not so fast, my dumb. We're running things around here now. Cuss me, Phil. One false move and I'm a roast duck. Leave me, Uncle Scrooge. It's not worth it. Nonsense, my boy. And here's where the game starts to be a bit interesting in that uh, DuckTales Remastered actually has some of the original game's difficulty in that if you don't take your time, you can get hit in a lot of stupid ways. Which, you know, nice of them for preserving that mentality, because uh, it is very easy to do that in the original games, but yikes, it can be surprising. Ow! We almost got them all! A fat lot of good that will do us if they make it to me vault! Though on the whole, this game's difficulty, even on its highest difficulties, is, isn't that much harder than the original DuckTales. It's longer, I will say, not only just because of the story content, but because of some of the changes to the actual main levels. But, you know, it's it's there. Either way, we're nearing the end of this tutorial level. It's not that hard. There's not even many enemies or death traps in it to compare to some other things. But there is a good amount of health, so make sure you grab it. Also, uh, load times will be cut out starting part two. Step away from me, fortune, you crook. Not this time, McDuck. Oh, you ain't getting the drop on this big old boy. Also, a weird little thing with this game's subtitles in the cutscenes, they're timed to end when the voice line ends, which is weird. Either way, time for the first boss, one of the Beagle Boys. He'll move left and right on the screen in two it in three increments, middle, far right, and far left. And he'll throw a couple things at you, either a bust of, of a duck or a globe. They each have their own little trajectories, but at the same time, they're not too bad. They, I think the globe likes to roll a bit more. 
When it stops moving, you need to use it as a weapon to hit the staple on the ceiling to dump on him and then damage him. Five hits is all it takes. It's a very simple boss fight, though on the whole, this game does have pretty good boss fights, I have to say. Not hard boss fights per se, but good boss fights. And he's out. Curse you, my duck! This ain't the last you'll see of me! Yeah, good riddance to bad beagles, I say. Now, why in the world was he interested in this old painting? Surely there are more valuable... Well, pluck me pin feathers. It looks like some kind of secret code. Boys, boys! What did you find, Uncle Scrooge? Yeah, what is it? I'm not sure, but I know how to find it out. I'll feed it into my supercomputer and use Gyro's new crypto analysis program. Then we'll know what the Beagle Boys were after. <laughs> Stand back, lads. Brigadoon! What is it, Uncle Scrooge? It's a treasure map, lads. And no ordinary treasure by the look of things. Only Uncle Scrooge would call any kind of treasure ordinary. Look! One of the treasures is in the middle of the Amazon! And there's another one in Transylvania! And one buried ten miles underground! Hey, wait a minute! Something screwy! This last treasure can't be right! Yeah! There's no mountain on Earth that's that high! Well, according to the Junior Woodchuck's guidebook, to get there we'd have to take about 537 million steps straight up till we reach the moon. You mean the moon moon? It looks that way, lads. <laughs> well, what are we waiting for? That treasure's not going to discover itself. God, the, 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 hearing the voices just puts a smile on my face. But now we have access to the same five stages from the original game. Though I find it odd, I don't think there's actually a voice line talking about the Himalayas. But in our little hub here, we actually have a few more options. Over here on the left is an art gallery. You spend the money throughout the game here. It actually doesn't influence any endings. However, I can't show you any of it because there's outright spoilers for later game stuff in the character stuff and you can't unlock some of the other arts until you buy more in there. So, uh, whoops. <laughs> Also kind of interesting, the money bin is here. We all know that famous part from DuckTales where we dive into the gold. Well, now we get to do it. This money bin does get some added things to it as we go through, namely some important treasures. And if you reach, I think, over, a, I want to say, 100 million, uh, the money bin does fill all the way up, but it's not that important. It's just a nice little detail. And I do note, uh, jumping into the money bin is a trophy slash achievement uh, on the game. But with that, I'm going to need to end this off here. Thank you guys for watching, and in part two, we'll be heading after our first of the five main stages. See you guys, then.